Hi everyone, my name is Kim and I'm the Manager of Education and Youth Programs at the Museum of Fine Arts St. Petersburg. This week, MFA staff are celebrating National Children's Book Week by reading some of our favorite storybooks related to the MFA collection. Today's book is related to this painting. Let's look closely for a moment. What do you think is happening in this scene? Who do you think these figures are? Our friend Mykeisha, who's the manager of individual giving at the MFA, is going to read us the book A Nation's Hope, the story of boxing legend Joe Lewis by Matt De La Pena. Hi, my name is Mykeisha Means, and I am the manager of individual giving at the Museum of Fine Arts St. Petersburg. I'll be reading A Nation's Hope, the story of boxing legend Joe Lewis. Yankee Stadium, 1938. Packed crowd buzzing and bets banter back and forth. The Bronx night air filled with summer. The world waits for Joe Lewis to take the ring, take center stage. White men wait standing beside black men, but standing apart, Jim Crow America. All to witness the most important match in boxing history. Soft-spoken Joe Lewis against the one man who put him on his back. But Joe knows tonight's fight is bigger than any two men. Son of a black sharecropper against Hitler's master race. Black and white Americans together against the rule of Nazi hate. The weight of history hangs on Joe's shoulders as he ducks through ropes, body already glazed with warm-up sweat. Would he come through for his country? The German Max Schmeling enters second, both boxers dancing in their corners. Shadow box jabs caught in a flash of candle. The referee calls the two to center ring. Biggest stage ever, he shouts over the crowd. May the best man win, he shouts. The bell dings and the two men raise fists, come together under a deafening roar. But the crowd didn't always roar for Joe Lewis. He didn't speak until he was six, and when he finally spoke, he stammered and was ridiculed. Words spinning just beyond Joe's grasp, and with black skin, he passed through childhood in shadows. Yet there was something about his hands, so big and powerful. Nights he'd stare down at those hands and dream. Joe's mom said it was music, and one morning sent him out with gathered change for a violin lesson. Joe ducked inside a gym instead, spied men twice his age and size, pounding heavy bags and skipping rope. He returned day after day, slowly stepping out from shadows. First time inside a ring as an amateur, though, his opponent was a blur of fists and footwork sent Joe toppling to the canvas seven times. Bruised jaw and bruised ego, but Joe came back. He watched older boxers spar and listen and grew into his body. The space between ropes became home. The dance of the fight, two men circling, shuffling, Delicate balance, movement based on the other guy's eyes. Back then, blacks didn't win decisions, not against whites. Joe had to let his fists be the referees. In his first professional fight, he knocked a man clear out of the ring. But in victory, Joe didn't raise his gloves and glow. He helped opponents to their feet and shook their hands. More knockouts followed, each new city another fallen man. His legend quickly spread across the country, people scrambling for a glance of Joe in a cab or coming from a cafe. Black neighborhoods longing for a hero to call their own found Joe and danced his every triumph in the streets. Hundreds surrounding Joe and his wife down a Harlem sidewalk Joe smiling, always humble, 
waving back with those powerful hands. Once a boyhood dream, now a people's hope. But at the height of Joe's fame, Hitler's German caught him with his gloves down, and Joe woke up on his back. Devastated, he covered his face, leaving the ring. Shadows once again falling, and the taste of failure on Harlem streets struck silent. Joe healed and vowed to battle back. He worked even harder as the world threatened war around him. Word leaked that the Nazis were filling concentration camps in Europe, just as Joe had got another shot at the dream. It was now more than just Blacks who needed a hero. It was all of America, and color was set aside. Seventy thousand erupt as Joe leaps from his corner at the bell an entire stadium leaning onto toes and holding its breath. Ears glued to radio in every home, in every city, the entire world stopping, its fate seemingly all in Joe's hands. Instead of waiting this time, Joe is first to strike. He jabs and retreats and jabs again, his gloves never dropping an inch. He stings the German with an overhand right and the crowd goes crazy. But Joe hears nothing. He strikes again, sends the German down. Soon as the German is up, Joe is on him again, a relentless fury of gloves and passion. The weight of the moment lifted, shadows disappearing. The German goes down again and again until his cornerman throws in the white towel and the referee waves Joe away. Just like that, it's over. Joe has shocked the world, the entire stadium in pandemonium. White men hugging black men and black men hugging back. The streets of Harlem once again dancing for their hero, but all of America dancing this time. And that is A Nation's Hope, the story of boxing legend, Joe Lewis. Thanks, my Keisha. This painting is by American artist Fletcher Martin and was created in 1948. It is titled The Undefeated and interprets an iconic moment from boxer Joe Lewis's last championship fight. Unusually, the artist chose not to represent Joe Lewis, but rather his losing opponent, Jersey Joe Walcott. We see here the referee catching Walcott as Lewis is declared the winner. This fight was experienced by millions on television and radio and was front page news the following day. Like we learned in our book, boxing was one of America's first arenas of racial integration. Thanks again to my Keisha and to you for joining us today. Tune in next time for another favorite storybook related to the MFA.